Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> it's really exciting to see everybody here in person. It's been a couple years, I think two years, since we've done one of these in person. I'm Nathan Benesh, founder of Airstreet Capital and trustee of the Rice Foundation. It's my pleasure to welcome you to now the seventh Research and Applied AI Summit. So, <laughs> yeah, dramatic effect. So, um, you know, we're trying to build and have been building a community of AI entrepreneurs, researchers, operators, investors, and policymakers for quite a number of years today. And um, the whole goal with this is to really focus on both the science and applications of AI technology and what that might mean for us going forward. We started quite humbly, I think, in 2015, uh, broadly one or two years after deep learning started to become a thing, but still pretty nascent. And we got together a group of technology companies or kind of early thinkers, some folks in media uh, talking and writing about where this might be going, and a small group of academics. And today, we're pretty much a global community, I would say, that spans large companies, whether that's big technology, um, industrials, and other sectors, startups, whether they're growth stage technology companies or brand new startups in stealth, academics, of course, ranging from undergrads, postgrads, professors, and the like, and um, folks in government and folks also in the investing community. And so we put a lot of emphasis on this, so uh, really take the time to meet one another. We'll have ample breaks during the day so you can mingle and get to know one another. Um, this is as much about the community as it is about the talks. On the organization side, I just get the short straw of doing the presenting. A lot of the operational work and organization is done by my sister Joyce, who I have a lot to thank. I think she's downstairs finishing some things. So um, yeah, big thanks to, to her for making this possible and for you know, our team here at Google and, and Cooley, who I'll thank also at the end. So, you know, we're here again because we have, I think, the collective ambition to make positive, impactful, um, you know, impact with machine learning. And um, I think this is a very important time to sort of discuss where we are today and where we might be going. So as most of you being practitioners, you're well aware that, you know, machine learning has been around in different forms for 50, 60 years or so. Um, you know, back in the summer of the 50s at Dartmouth when we thought that we could convene a, I mean, a bunch of scientists to try and figure out AI in a summer. It, you know, it took significantly longer than that. And we've gone through broadly three waves of computing, and at the moment we're seriously in this large-scale deep learning phase, which I think is very interesting because it creates a new era of halves. Um, this is some work in our annual State of AI report where we've been looking at large-scale computing capacity and really drawing an emphasis onto how there's a significant amount of concentration amongst you know, basically one vendor and how we need more um, contributions from you know, different vendors in the market to create a kind of cohesive and inclusive environment for many different companies making machine learning applications and research. It also creates an era of have-nots. And you know, we've seen, unfortunately, the precipitous decline of contributions of academia to this large-scale deep learning era. And we think that there's some very, you know, very important initiatives that we can uh, you know, undertake as you know, society, as academia, as governments to try and normalize some of this playing field between large technology companies or who are the haves and uh, academia, which are largely under-resourced, but still need to make important contributions to where things are going. The exciting thing, too, is that you know, a lot of this technology is no longer closed source. It's no longer held um, you know, in the clutches of a few companies around the world but has been broadly distributed in you know, what I think will go down last year as probably the you know, newest summer of AI. You're all familiar with these models that seem to be released on a weekly basis now. This is just an example of a genealogical tree of some of these transformer systems that we'll hear about today. And um, you know, why uh, computing and why open source is very important is because it seems so far that scale really matters. Scale drives performance. We can see many examples of um, models that have capabilities at larger scales, which didn't exist at smaller scales, hence the term emergence. And you know, this has driven a flurry of uh, capital from private uh, investors and big tech companies into companies that are pursuing um, you know, the creation of large-scale AI systems, borderline um, AGI, as you see on the right. But at the same time, uh, system reliability, interpretability, resilience is incredibly important, as it is with every major technology, and perhaps even more importantly for this one, and um, again, some work in the State of AI report and through my uh, co-author of that report, Ian Hogarth, you know, we've seen really that there's a proliferation of investment and, um, and money and work and time 
focused on advancing capabilities without a real commensurate increase in the amount of work, time, and money going into alignment and making these systems safe. So we can see on the right an illustrative graph that paints this picture where you know, everybody wants to go to NeurIPS and CVPR and talk about capabilities and no one wants to go to the safety workshop. Um, now this is you know, a little bit outdated. I think uh, in the last year or two when we started drawing attention to this topic, um, you know, momentum has significantly shifted. You know, we might get into some of those discussions today as well. And uh, you know, timing is incredibly important now. You know, AI is no longer um, you know, an academic task or something that you work in a startup or a big tech company in isolation of the world around you. Uh, you know, for better or for worse, it's been um, you know, sucked into uh, nationalist uh, debates. And um, it is very important because you know, nation states have a role to play here. Here I'm just highlighting some work um, in the UK about how um, you know, the British government and the British state can be involved in being uh, you know, an impactful place to pursue uh, AI research and, um, and AI technology building. Some of you picked up the latest copy of The Economist last week. You'll see uh, Rishi Sunak on the front cover with uh, his nice Brit GBT computer. <laughs> and uh, also, if you've been following the news, uh, my co-author on the State of Aeroport has been appointed to run the Foundation Model Task Force, which is a 100 million pound budget to basically figure out uh, how the UK can act um, you know, on the front foot with regards to, to, to safe regulation uh, that's permissive for certain capabilities and more restrictive for, for others that are you know, profoundly unsafe. So a lot will come, come from this and very excited to see where it'll go. I also wanted to you know, look back a little bit in history and kind of show you some of the achievements that you know, various speakers have uh, produced over the years since, since speaking here. So you know, one example is uh, you know, David Healy, who came here a couple of years ago under the recursion banner and talked to us about uh, machine learning and biology for drug discovery. He's an early employee at recursion, and the business went public two years ago, and is probably one of the you know, most important standalone uh, machine learning drug discovery companies. And he's back here today under uh, a new, <coughs> new t-shirt, as it were, with Inveda Biosciences, uh, doing, again, more exciting work in drug discovery from plants. Uh, Dave Palmer, who is uh, one of the original inventors of Darktrace, um, and I think gave his first public talk about the technology behind the business in enterprise cybersecurity. Uh, that business went public on the LSE uh, two or three years after that talk. Um, we had uh, the creators of the Snorkel Library, an open source project from Stanford, which is around weak data annotation. Uh, both um, Alex Ratner and Chris Ray, his professor, and Kunle, basically it's like triumvirate of pretty impactful Stanford professors. And academics were here a couple of years ago, and they've been building amazing companies since then. And on the research side, uh, you know, what, what looked a bit niche a couple of years ago in robotics has really kind of had its second or third coming, and I think we'll hear a bit more about that today uh, with Raya Hadsell, who you know, has since been part of work on Gato, this kind of generalist AI agent. And you know, just last week, a uh, foundation model that can control 100 different types of robots with very few examples in this RoboCat paper. So you know, again, this kind of event is really just about catalyzing new, con new connections. Um, you know, we've created career opportunities for people who've met each other here, and really about sharing best practices. So the three pillars of what we do is this community. Um, we fund AI fellowships, uh, mostly focused on open source, and we provide startup capital to entrepreneurs. Uh, RISE is our annual summit. It occurs just once a year in London, but we run London AI meetups quite regularly in London, and we've recently started doing them in New York and in San Francisco, and we'll be kind of creating these sort of pop-up best practice events as we go and travel around the world. So uh, please keep posted on that, and if you flew in from somewhere and you think we should do one there and would like to discuss that, uh, please let me know. On the foundation side, we set this up in the UK a couple of years ago with this idea of contributing all ticket proceeds that we generate from this event into this foundation, which then recycles it back into the community to try and uh, you know, bring more people in it, advance education and open source, and you know, we'll be doing a lot more there, so we thank you for your support uh, with the foundation. Um, and on the Air Street side, which is my uh, full-time day job, uh, we've been investing in machine learning companies in lots of different disciplines, whether that's enterprise security, developer tools, bio, and other areas, and so we'll, we'll be announcing some more news on that front soon. We, uh, you know, with Ian, we produce a state of AI report, which will come out towards the end of this year. Uh, on a monthly basis, I produce uh, a guide to AI newsletter with my colleague Othmane, and we've been doing a lot of work also on, uh, on spin-outs, trying to, uh, you know, like many of you in academia are thinking about forming a new company out of your inventions, and we really try and make it as 
easy and permissive for you to go and do that. So if that's something you care about too, I'd love to talk to you about that as well. Um, on our supporter side, we've been long-term partners with Google, who we have you know, a lot to thank for for this fantastic venue and uh, a lot of their support for this event. They've recently uh, created a pretty killer program, I'd say, that offers you $350,000 over two years for compute with specific focus on generative AI companies. You get 150K in year one. There's some more details for how you can apply at this QR code uh, and this URL. And there's a couple of members of the team here who I encourage you to talk to. Um, this is brand new, and I think it's probably one of the most compelling offerings out there. And to top that off, they have this new AI First Accelerator, which is equity free, importantly, and gives you a lot of guidance and support and best practices from Google engineers and other Google staff members to try and accelerate uh, your journey as a startup. And it's present in Europe and in Israel, and undoubtedly, I guess, would, would grow beyond that too. And uh, you know, of course, to found a company, you need good legal advice, and so we've been uh, long-term partners with Cooley. Um, so I encourage you to speak to, uh, to my friend Aaron Archer, who's uh, you know running a lot of their technology practice for transactions, M&A, and and all the rest of it. And um, they've produced some pretty cool open resources that you can get access to at uh, CooleyGo.com. So this is our, our, our lineup for today. Um, we'll span a lot of different disciplines. We'll kind of learn about it as I introduce every speaker. Uh, you know, we tried really hard to give you this. Um, international cohort of speakers that um, I think you'll enjoy learning from, everything from research to industry to policy and, uh, and how to do you know, large-scale science leadership. So I'm really excited to, to start the day with you guys. Thank you again for coming.